Okay, hi folks. So we're talking about learning still, and we're going to talk more about the DeGroote model now and try and understand some of its convergence properties. And um, one, one thing just to start with, let me sort of uh, give you, um, uh, reiterate a little bit on the structure of the model here. So we have uh, bi of t looking like the sum over j's of tij b j at t minus 1, right? So how much the person i puts on different people's weight uh, beliefs in the previous period. So it's a very simple model. The nice thing about this is that if we want to think about the belief um, structure, if we're talking about what the beliefs um, B1, so we represent this as a vector of B, B2's belief at T and so forth down to Bn of T, this is just equal to this T matrix times the vector B1 at T minus 1 and so forth. Bn at t minus 1, right? So when we're thinking about what this looks like, we can think of this as, as b um, at time t as a vector is just equal to t times b at time t minus 1, okay? So this fact that this thing looks like a very simple um, vector uh, means that it's very easy to work with in terms of uh, updating and some of the mathematics behind it. And in particular, um, this means that we can represent uh, the belief at some time t, b of t is just going to be equal to t raised to the tth power times b at zero, right? Because B1 is equal to T times this, right? So to get B1, you do this. To get T2, you do the belief, right? So we're just raising this to T powers. And uh, the reason that this model is going to be so nice to work with is that we know a lot about matrices raised to powers. And in particular, uh, matrices where the, the rows all sum to uh, 1 uh, and are non-negative. Those are nicely behaved matrices, and there's a lot of uh, study that's been developed in, in different areas of mathematics, in particular in uh, the study of Markov chains, which have these kinds of properties um, in understanding these kinds of, of mathematics. So the beliefs take a very simple form, and what we can do now is begin to ask questions about when is there convergence, when is there a consensus, who has influence, and when is there convergence, when is there a consensus, that's just going to depend on properties of this matrix and who has influence will also depend on what this matrix ends up looking like when we raise this to, to higher and higher powers what does it end up looking like who ends up with a lot of weight in that system okay so understanding this is really going to depend on these uh, these kinds of properties okay so let's talk a little bit about convergence so let's start with an example um, very simple example uh, person three here just listens to person two two just listens to one and one puts equal weight on two and three. Okay, so this is a world where nobody pays attention to themselves. They're all listening to somebody else. Who they're listening to depends on who they are. Um, this is a world that, that will converge. And let's start with, say, example, you know, belief one for person one, uh, zero for person two and three. And so that's this initial belief. And what's going to happen? Well, um, so uh, person one starts with a belief of one. Um, person two is going to take over that belief, right? They're going to update. So after that, we can go through. What's the next belief going to be? Well, person two is now putting weight one on one. They're going to get this. Person one's averaging two zeros. They're going to get a zero. Person three is, is just paying attention to two, so they're going to get a zero. So the belief after one period goes to this. You can, you know keep looking at this and, and so forth, um, this will eventually converge to two-fifths, two-fifths, two-fifths. So if you look at what this process converges to, it's going to be two-fifths for each agent, and it, and it converges uh, fairly nicely. Okay. Let's look at another example, and all I'm going to do now is switch 
So before three was listening to two, and we're going to move that and have instead three um, listen to one. Okay, so this was a one before, and we're going to move the weight. For, instead of three listening to two, three is now going to listen to one. Okay, and let's look at what happens in this particular setting. So now we're in a setting, and let's start with the same beliefs we did before. So all we did was change three's belief from listening to two to listening to one. And what happens now? Well, we start with these beliefs. And after one period, one is going to now believe zero, but both three and two are listening to one, so they're both going to switch to one. Okay. Um, okay, so, so now we've got a situation where both two and three believe one, and one believes zero, and one is listening to two and three, and two and three are listening to one, so they're going to switch again. And then they're going to switch again and switch again and so forth. So what's happening here is they keep it just exchanging beliefs. And an even see, e easier example of something like this would just be, you know, uh, if, if person one listened to person two and person two just listened to person one, they're just going to keep swapping beliefs back and forth. And that's effectively what's going on here. So we get blinking, we get no convergence in this, in this setting. Okay? So the beliefs just keep changing over time, they never converge. And obviously this is, you know, fairly naive in the sense that the agents don't realize they keep exchanging beliefs back and forth, and they keep doing that infinitely often. But this is, is a system that's not converging, okay? Now, what's true about this? In order for this to happen, um, it's actually based on the cycles in this graph. And here, all the cycles are of length two, and we've got the beliefs in, in such a way that they keep... Uh, blinking back and forth, and so it's possible for the beliefs to keep switching back and forth on these cycles. And so it's, uh, there's a cyclicity in the graph which gets, uh, is possible to reproduce in the beliefs. Okay? Now it could be that you know, for other beliefs you might have converged. If we started everybody with a belief of one, they would have converged to a belief of one. So it depends on which things we, ch we choose, but whenever there are even cycles, all the cycles are even in a, in a given graph, then we could find um, situations where we're going to get uh, non-convergence. So more generally, um, let's actually look at the conditions which are going to define convergence. So let's say that uh, we're, we're starting with some particular network of weights that people put on different individuals. We'll say that that society converges, T converges, if the limit of this process raised to the T, so the limiting belief exists for all um, initial beliefs. And, and, uh, so, so no matter what initial beliefs we started with, we would end up with convergence of this um, uh, overall belief. Okay, so that'll be a definition. And um, in, in terms of characterizing this, we'll say that T is aperiodic if the greatest common divisor of all its simple cycles is uh, one, okay? So for instance, of these two things we looked at before, um, here we could find a cycle, so let's look at this, we have a cycle of length three. So we have one cycle of length three, we have a cycle of length two, the greatest common d divisor of three and two, they don't divide into each other, the only thing that divides both of those is one, Greatest common divisor is one. This thing is aperiodic, right? So this one is aperiodic. What do the cycles look like over here? Well, there's a cycle of length two. Here's a cycle of length two. Here's a cycle of length four. All the cycles are even. All cycles are two, four, six, eight, etc. Greatest common divisor, two. So this one is periodic. It's not aperiodic. Not aperiodic. Okay. So um, when we when we're looking at, at the structure of these uh, <clears throat> matrices, what turns out to be true is that this aperiodicity is going to be what defines whether or not you get convergence of this process. So in particular, there's a theorem which you can get out of a variety of sources, but basically can be derived from uh, work in Markov chain theory uh, and, and more generally in linear algebra. Um, suppose that we have T be strongly connected. And let me say a little bit about what strongly connected means. 
strongly connected is going to say that um, from every given individual, there exists a path, a, a directed path from I to J. So there exists a directed path from I to J for all I, J. Okay? So basically, we're not in a situation where some people could never end up getting information from other individuals. Everybody could eventually hear from everybody else. Okay? If, you, if you have non-strong connection, the, the characterization here gets a little more complicated. Um, if you're interested in that, I have a paper with Ben Golub in 2010, um, which gives the complete characterization of convergence for non-strongly connected uh, networks. We'll just deal with the strongly connected ones, and that's most of the intuition. Okay, so what's the theorem say? The theorem says that you get convergence if and only if you get uh, aperiodicity. So that aperiod uh, aperiodicity is necessary and sufficient for convergence. Um, and separate part, so first part is aperiodicity is going to give you convergence. And then the second part of that we learn is if things are convergent, then we're also going to have that the limit of this matrix actually looks like um, every row is going to converge to having, so if we look at, at what uh, T raised you know, in, in, in the limit raised to the infinite power looks like, what it looks like is a vector, a set of each row has entries S1 to Sn, the same S1 to Sn. So everybody ends up putting this in, in the limit the same weights on other people's uh, initial beliefs indirectly, where S is the unique left-hand side eigenvector that has eigenvalue 1. Okay, so that's a mouthful. But it says that, in fact, what this is, is the same eigenvector that we were talking about when we talked about eigenvector centrality. Okay. So this is a, 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 an eigenvector that has eigenvalue 1. Um, in this case, it's going to be the unique one if we've got strongly connected and aperiodicity. Um, this thing is going to be convergent, and it's going to have uh, um, nicely uh, defined weights here, um, S1 through Sn, and in fact, they will all be um, non-negative, they'll all be positive, in fact. So, so these uh, is a very powerful set of results here. It tells us aperiodicity gives us convergence. Moreover, convergence um, occurs to a very specific limit, and that limit's given by the um, left-hand side unit eigenvector of the matrix, and that's where those two-sevenths and two-sevenths, two-sevenths came from, and the other numbers that we found uh, in, in those examples before. Okay. So what we're going to look at next is, uh, I'll, I'll go through a, a how you prove this. Um, it involves a bit of linear algebra and some theorems from that, so if you're, you're, uh, you, you, can, you can skip that if you like. If you want to see the details, I'll explain how you can derive that kind of theorem. And then afterwards, we'll begin to put this in process. So what we've got is convergence from aperiodicity, plus we know what the limit looks like. So we'll then talk a little more in detail about what this S vector actually means, what it comes from and uh, look at it in some examples and, and try and understand how we might use this, this model a bit.